Hello and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Walker. First, the highlight. Commissioner of Health in Lagos, Professor Akia Biomi, announces end of fourth wave in the state following consistent drop in new infections. Katsina State Government expands healthcare manpower, increases vaccination sites. And Pakistan records highest single-day increase amid fifth COVID-19 wave. Thank you for joining us. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, as of the 16th of January 2022, over 18,000 cases of COVID-19 have been recorded from inbound travelers to Nigeria. The NCDC says it is aware of reports of travelers to Nigeria who have experienced delays at the airport for not meeting all the travel requirements as stated on the Nigeria International Travel Portal, the NITP, and this is to ensure a seamless use of the travel portal. While the agency is urging the public to adhere strictly to the guidance on the portal, and that includes the registration 24 hours before the travel date, Card payments recommended over bank transfers as QR codes for bank transfers are generated after 24 hours. And it says that travelers who do not receive their QR code despite making payments should download the permit to travel or QR code using the Get Permit to Travel, uh, which is on the page. And that takes them to uh, a link which also is sent to their email addresses of the registered travelers. The Nigeria International Travel Portal was launched by the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, formerly, uh, formerly the Presidential Task Force, with support from the Coalition Against COVID-19, car COVID. Well, 123 additional persons in Nigeria have tested positive to COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the latest figures were reported from 12 states and show a drop in figures reported earlier. Edo accounted for the highest number of cases with 38 infections, Oshu had 25, Rivers had 22, while Kaduna and Oyo had 12 and 10 cases. Kwara, Ogun, Bauchi, Kano are some of the states following with cases reported in single digits. The total number of confirmed cases in Nigeria is now 251,694. 175 patients have been discharged in the last 24 hours, increasing the total number of recoveries to 225,455. Six more deaths were recorded in the last 24 hours, raising the fatality toll to 3,123. Currently, there are over 23,000 active cases in Nigeria, while more than 3.9 million samples have been tested so far. Lagos State accounts for the highest number of cases on admission, with over 17,000 people, followed by the FCT and Oyo State. Over 13 million Nigerians of eligible age for COVID-19 vaccination have received their first dose, while more than 5 million of the population have been fully vaccinated. In Africa, the total case count is over 10 million. There have been more than 235,000 deaths. The total global confirmed cases have surpassed 342 million, while deaths are beyond 5.5 million. And according to the latest updates by the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Katsina State took a step up in 24 hours, ranking 20th in the top performing states of the Federation. As the state continues its mass vaccination drive, only 8% have received the first dose and 2% the complete dose. As is the case globally, the fight against the spread of COVID-19 in Katsina State has been on for two years now, with relevant stakeholders, including the state government, busy taking several measures to manage, control and contain its transmission in the state. Uh, a lot of uh, capacity of healthcare workers have been built. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, resources in terms of uh, uh, equipment, you know, PPEs, sanitizers, trainings, you know, and even the facilities for the management of COVID-19. 
you know, we have them in the state. So I think uh, it's well under control, and uh, we have ramped up our testing for the uh, COVID-19. The state has since started administering booster doses, and in December last year, Governor Aminu Masari, his deputy, Manil Yakubu, and all the members of his cabinet received the COVID-19 booster shots in his office at the Katsina Government House. At one of the 567 COVID-19 vaccination centers in the state, an official says there's good turnout every day. Yeah, we have a lot of the turnout there because some of them, some of the clients, when they come and receive their dose, we keep it alone for time so that they go and they send the another client. 35-year-old Usman San is among those who have received not just the required two doses of COVID-19, but the booster as well. He narrates his experience after taking the vaccine. I didn't experience any allergy after receiving the two doses, including the booster shots. What I observe is that anything that comes to people free of charge, they despise. Our leaders were the first set of people to receive the vaccines. If it's harmful, they would not allow themselves to be vaccinated. Experts say the booster jab has the capacity to strengthen the body's immune system and it will go a long way in preventing several diseases driven by the Omicron variant. The booster dose is taking six months after the second COVID-19 jab. And here in Lagos, the State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, has announced that the state is out of the COVID-19 fourth wave. According to him, the COVID-19 cases increased last year when a lot of people returned to Lagos for the Christmas holiday. But currently, the numbers have dropped. He adds that the state government is prepared in case another variant is detected. The commissioner is also encouraging residents to get vaccinated and stay safe from the deadly virus. So we are out of the fourth wave now. Um, we are going to continue with our vaccination campaign. We're looking at boosters. Uh, anybody who wants the first dose, second dose and boosters, we're ramping up now because uh, we are now out of the fourth wave. We don't know what's going to happen next, but we want to be prepared. And Mr. Governor has said that we need to hit certain targets this year. So we're going to now go back to the drawing board because there's a little bit of vaccine hesitancy in Lagos. Um, but we really need to look at how to encourage Lagosians to accommodate taking these vaccines. Uh, we know that the vaccines are effective in terms of reducing your vulnerability to severe illness from COVID. It doesn't so much protect you from COVID, uh, but it protects you from getting extremely unwell or even dying. And that's exactly what we want to prevent in Lagos. We don't want people to get sick and die. You can catch a cold or COVID, but we want you to recover. Uh, in this uh, fourth wave, most people were managed at home because the Omicron variant uh, didn't seem to affect the lungs as badly as the Delta variant. Um, so that's where we are. Meanwhile, cases of COVID have plummeted in Africa and deaths are declining for the first time since the Omicron-dominated fourth wave of the virus reached its peak. The World Health Organization describes the 56-day flare-up as Africa's shortest upsurge yet. The WHO Africa Region Office said newly reported cases fell by 20% in the week to Sunday, while notified deaths dropped by 8%. The office also said South Africa, where the Omicron variant was first detected, had seen cases trending downward over the past four weeks. Now, only North Africa reported an increase in cases last week with a 55% spike. Meanwhile, only 10% of the African population are fully vaccinated, according to WHO. The continent, with a population of 1.2 billion, has been relatively unscathed by the pandemic, reporting over 200 and 34,000 deaths from 10.5 million cases. Uh, Dr. Masajisho Moeti, WHO's Regional Director for Africa, 
however, warns that the continent has yet to turn the tables on this pandemic so long as the virus continues to circulate. She says further pandemic waves are inevitable. And Austria's parliament yesterday passed a vaccine mandate that will require all adults in the country to get vaccinated against COVID-19 beginning in February. The move makes Austria the first EU country to pass a vaccine mandate, despite tens of thousands of angry citizens continuing to protest such measures in Austria and across Europe. Meanwhile, in Germany, the rapid spread of the Omicron variant has led to a huge chunk of the workforce working from home. A new study shows that half of German workers want to make remote work a permanent fixture. It's a key component of how we live with COVID-19, they say. Well, Clifford Kuhnen, Deutsche Welle correspondent in Berlin, joins us now uh, for more on the program. Hello, Clifford. How is Germany adapting to working from home, especially compared to other countries? Well, Germany is really taking to working from home. Um, at the peak of lockdown last year, around half of Germans were working from home offices, which is higher than the EU average of about 42% of employees, although it's still lower than the Netherlands with 60%. Um, I'm watching people slipping on black ice and scra scraping ice off their cars this morning in snowy Berlin. I imagine even more people would be in favour of home office right now. And since November, employers who previously did allow their workers to work from home voluntarily have been obliged to let them do so, unless it's not feasible. For example, if they're steel workers, they need to work in a steel plant. They obviously can't do that from home. Now, a study by the IW Economic Research Institute in Cologne shows that about half the employees in Germany who worked from home during the pandemic would like to be able to work at home at least some of the time in the future. They feel they can work more productively, efficiently and effectively in the home office. And the time saved by not having to commute to the workplace or scrape ice off your car was also mentioned as an advantage. From the employer side, only 13% of the companies felt productivity had fallen because of working from home. And a big issue is also making sure that workplaces at home are well, are well equipped. One downside of the home office is that cooperation and communication with colleagues is a little bit more difficult. But Clifford, with, with the way things are, is remote work something the government is keen to encourage? Well, the government is keen to encourage working from home if employees want it. Federal Labour Minister Hubertus Heil is very much in favour of establishing the Home Office permanently in everyday work in Germany, and he's been trying for the past two years to try and make the rules permanent. There has been opposition from the Conservatives, who are no longer in power, so the current red-green-yellow ruling coalition will create modern rules for mobile working in Germany, they say, and a legal right to work from home. Now, Heil's plans stipulate that employers have to enable their workers to work from home in the future unless operational reasons speak against it. So if they refuse, there has to be good reason. And the government says it will try to limit the downsides of working from home, saying that no one should get sick from working at home and needed to be able to call it a day. And it's also very positive when you think they're focusing on the positives because things you have things like parents, uh, fathers especially, spending more time with their children uh, since the pandemic because of working from home. Well, Clifford, we'll continue, um, you know, on that trajectory uh, a little later. We need to go on a break. When we return, we have more stories from the international scene. Stay with us. Welcome back. And Deutsche Welle correspondent Clifford Kunin is still with us uh, for more on the situation in Germany. And finally, Clifford, um, to work from home, you need a good internet connection. Uh, Germany's internet connections are, we understand, slower than other developed economies. Um, are there any plans to change this? In Germany, there is a perception that Germany trails on the tech side. In 2013, then Chancellor Angela Merkel said the internet is new territory for all of us. Now, clearly it wasn't back in 2013, but it is sort of in, an indication of how things are seen here. Now, Germany has definitely moved on since then, and e there is even a ministry for digital and transport. But at the moment, it's definitely more focused on transport than on digital. The pandemic has really brought a spotlight to bear on Germany's technological shortfalls and just how far behind in digitization and, and fast internet access Germany has fallen. Future competitiveness will depend on connectivity, 
Meanwhile, local health authorities are faxing new COVID case numbers to a central agency. The coalition partners promised during last year's election that they'd build up the 5G mobile network and continue laying the newest fibre optic cables to bring fast internet connections to every corner of the country. And in April, a law was passed giving everyone a legal right to a fast internet access, although it isn't exactly clear what that means in practice. Germany tends to be very strong in traditional industries like engineering, but it doesn't have a significant tech presence, or it has very little significant tech presence in the way, say, that the US has. Now, there is general agreement that better connectivity can help the country be more competitive and lure more research and development, especially for innovative areas like autonomous driving, blockchain, or artificial intelligence. And it's definitely led to some tech upgrades. One of the things we've seen during the pandemic is that many companies have finally said goodbye to paper. Indeed, we'll see what the coming days bring. Clifford Koonin there, Deutsche Welle correspondent, joining us from Berlin. Meanwhile, Pakistan has reported more than 7,000 COVID-19 cases in a single day, its highest daily number of infections since the pandemic began. The country's infection numbers are lower compared with other countries, such as neighboring India, where Pakistan tests 50 to 60,000 people a day, with a population of 220 million compared to India, where about 1.9 million tests are being done per day. Here's more on the global update. Pakistan has recorded its highest single-day increase in COVID-19 cases since the start of the pandemic, with 7,678 new patients, showing a worrying spike as the country struggles to contain the fifth wave of the contagion. Amid rising trend of disease across the country, a ban on indoor dining in cities and districts with positivity above 10% has been imposed. The government has also authorized booster vaccination shots for citizens over the age of 30. Vaccination of children over the age of 12 has been made mandatory to attend the schools and children under 12 will attend schools with 50% attendance. The World Health Organization's advisory panel has recommended extending the use of a reduced dosage of Pfizer's BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine to children aged 5 to 11 years old. We have updated the interim recommendations of this product to extend the age indication down to 5 years with a reduced dosage for those five to 11 years. However, I wish to remind you that in keeping with the revised roadmap, this age group in the lowest, is in the lowest priority use group for vaccination, except for children who have comorbidities who are in the high priority group. Also aligned with the revised roadmap, SAGE has updated the interim recommendation for the use of booster doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, emphasizing the need to start with the highest priority use groups, such as older adults and health workers, four to six months after the completion of the primary series. France will ease work from home rules from early February and allow nightclubs to reopen two weeks later as the officials say the general COVID-19 situation in the country is starting to improve. Caps on the number of people allowed into sports and entertainment venues will also be lifted on February the 2nd and masks will no longer be required outdoors from that date. With the vaccine pass, which requires a certificate of vaccination to enter public venues like restaurants, cafes, cinemas and long-distance trains will enter into force as planned from January the 24th. And finally, Beijing Capital International Airport, the designated airport for inbound travelers for the 2022 Winter Olympics, is now open to welcome global athletes and officials. The airport has enforced a closed-loop management system on arrivals and departures of Winter Olympics participants. In full compliance with the preventive protocols, all the participants have to pass health declaration checks, screening and testing, as well as early procedures before heading to the three competition zones. And let's go back to our lead story that Lagos is out of the COVID-19 fourth wave. Joining us to talk more about this, Dr. Jamie Uganu, a public health physician. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Now, Lagos, they've announced that, um, you know, the state is out of the woods uh, following holiday travels that led to the fourth wave. This is welcome news, isn't it? Yes. Actually, it is uh, welcome news. and. We are happy about it, and 
it, uh, the lesson from it is that it has shown that uh, uh, in partly uh, the one of the key contributors to our to any uh, subsequent uh, uh, spikes or the so-called wave has to do be has to do with uh, uh, partners that are coming from other parts of the country, maybe during festivity or if there is any uh, big occasion within the country. So that means that uh, it's a lesson we need to learn. So that uh, when there are such occasion, uh, we can do proper planning and uh, on how to a kind of try to avoid such occurrence maybe in the nearest future. Thank you. So essentially, tracking it, knowing that travel, you know, tends to increase uh, the number of cases. But then, what's the next step, and what do you expect? Some might be thinking, okay, perhaps it's now time for me to remove my face mask. No, I don't think uh, it has got to that level. Uh, as just like what I said, uh, we're, whether we uh, at the moment we are still having uh, people still coming into the country, so that's not an excuse because we have a, a sudden increase. I mean, decrease does not, you know, give us to uh, uh, to uh, allow people to start it or remove it and fix mask. And anyway, as regards to the issue of fix mask, uh, it will be fun that people don't wear don't, uh, the compliance has been relatively very low. Uh, it has not been. Uh, uh, Encouraging uh, even before now, I'm sure that may have even contributed to the fourth way we just uh, 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 recorded uh, of recent. Uh, but one other thing I would like to say, uh, as part of our uh, lesson learned, is that the idea of allowing people to go and uh, uh, to go for testing of uh, uh, the end of the lab of their choice, especially incoming passenger, I think we need to look at that. Uh, I will advise or recommend that. Consequently, maybe we should have a, a, a centralized sample collection or testing site, which will be maybe very close to the airport uh, to prevent uh, such occurrence. Because most of the time, those people that come into the country, uh, they hardly comply. Some don't comply at all. They will pay. They are there, they, they, the usual testing within the 72 hours are often not observed, which has been a major challenge. So I would recommend maybe you can have a centralized uh, sample collection just very close to the airport, so that everybody can have the opportunity to be, uh, for he or her sample to be collected, he or even tested before allowing them to go for their to their viral zone for for for, for isolation purposes and so on. I think it it will it, it, uh, maybe help uh, in sus uh, subsequently to avert maybe uh, other uh, spike in the number of cases, maybe during spikes or or any other other during festivities. Yeah, thank you. It's also interesting that you mentioned that uh, since the launch of the Nigeria International Travel Portal, um, it's been updated frequently over time to enable more user-friendly experience for travelers, um, and not just travelers, laboratories, also other users. Uh, but a number of people still encounter challenges. Um, in your opinion, and perhaps from what you've heard, how would you rate the portal? And this is also in, in really helping to limit the spread of the virus and variants in the country? Uh, for me, I think the portal has been, uh, in terms of uh, data entry, logging in, booking appointment, I think it has been relatively okay. Uh, in any system, there's bound to be one or two challenges. But I want to tell you that um, I've helped on one or uh, two occasions whereby people are challenged and I were able to resolve it. I don't think, you know, logging in, you know, booking appointment is a challenge. The actual challenge is actually people going for testing when they come into the country. There have been a lot of cases where people don't, after paying, they don't actually go for testing within the 72 hour period when they come into the country, which has been a major challenge. And that's why I'm I, I suggesting if, uh, as they come into the country, we, if we don't have the facility to, after, uh, to do the actual testing in a very close, uh, I mean, close by the airport. We may, I think that if, uh, we can have opportunity of collecting sample of every passenger that are coming to the country to avoid a situation whereby many will not, uh, of many of the, uh, them not actually going for that testing. And secondly, I also, with the, there are reported cases of people uh, that died or had COVID as a result of uh, spread from those that are coming to the country for holidays and so on. And some people died, I have colleagues that report, uh, had uh, cases like that. So I want to also use this opportunity to inform the general audience that the issue of isolation is a mutual uh, uh, and collective responsibility on which anybody that's coming in, maybe in, in future, 
for one or the other than from any part of the country, and for other parts of the country, maybe in US or from UK or in, or in Europe, a family should also uh, you know, be a part of ensuring that uh, they provide that enable environment for people to, uh, to be isolated so that uh, the possibility of actually spreading that virus so uh, to the maybe the host will be uh, reduced to the minimum. So uh, what I'm saying is that any find the person, maybe uh, a visitor coming into the country, uh, I mean, there, there should be availability of uh, uh, such family or host making provision so that that individual can actually observe uh, uh, the isolation so as to avoid you know spreading uh, the possibility of spreading the virus. I think that will also go uh, a long way in uh, in preventing such. Then I don't know whether you are aware of the mobile call that was set in by Lagos State, which is also a very laudable environment, especially for those that violated. Uh, they were meant to face penalty. They were faced to, uh, meant to face a mobile court whereby they were asked why they violated and they were charged appropriately or sanctioned appropriately. But I still think uh, um, the idea, before getting to that level, we should look at our testing you know, uh, processes uh, allowing people to just go to any of the effort, uh, any laboratory and get tested, and we uh, also uh, yeah can encourage uh, you know spread because some don't actually don't go with it. That's a with Some people violate such process, uh, such process. So I would advise if you can have a central collection point very close to the airport, where everybody, even if you cannot test them immediately, uh, they can we can get that sample collected, and it's not left for the uh, the host or whoever family member to ensure that. So people comply with the isolation process so as to prevent them not getting infected. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want to mention some family member who eventually got infected during the fourth wave as a result of people coming into the country. So there is a collective responsibility, not only by the government alone. We also need to contribute those people, the family members who also need to be part of the process so that well. they can also prevent themselves from getting infected. Uh, thank Indeed. You yeah. Thank you. We appreciate yeah. your time always yeah. on the program. Dr. Yeah. Jamie Ganu is a public yeah. health physician. Yeah. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can visit our website, channelcv.com. It has more updates, also a better understanding of the top stories on the pandemic, plus other breaking stories at your fingertips. That's the program this evening. Thank you for watching. I'm Minister Walker. Stay healthy.